Hi, Robert Kiefer here with Hydro Hero, and we are coming to you live from my hotel room, as you can see in the background. Today, we're going to be talking about crawl spaces that are flooded. We're going to show you one that we wrapped up not too long ago. I mean, this thing was completely flooded out. And then how we fixed it and what it looks like now and why you should think about having your crawl space waterproofed and encapsulated. And we're going to do that right after this. Okay, so here we go. So here's a crawl space that uh, we got called into and there was some major flooding. As you can see, this is all water throughout here and it is, I think, six to eight inches. Drop down just a little bit there, you can see. About six to eight inches of standing water all the way across this crawl space. All the insulations fallen and uh, the HVAC system got damaged. You can look, you got live wires that are down in the water. You know, what kind of fire hazard uh, could this cause to your house by allowing water to stand in your crawl space? So let me show you some other pictures here. All right, so this part doesn't look so bad until you realize what this is. You come in the crawl space access door here, you step down in, and like, like I said, you got about eight inches of standing water. This is actually a silver tarp that's used for the roof. You can see the brown part there in silver. This is the silver side, and it is literally floating the entire way in this crawl space. You can see that um, this water pump is sitting in the water, so that's rusting and getting ruined. You have a dryer vent that's not connected, and that's sitting in the water as well. Uh, all the tape and adhesive on these supply ducts is um, coming off allowing water or um, the uh, mold in the air and all the contaminants to be pulled into the HVAC system and then distributed through the house. And we'll go over here to another picture. Here's that tarp. And here is that um, dryer vent line that's not connected. So that's just dumping a lot of humid air in there as well, making the situation even worse. Here you can start to see fruiting bodies. Uh, this is uh, different types of fungi that's growing down there. This can end up um, uh, in certain species like white rot and uh, wood rot, brown rot, uh, dry rot. These things can all start eating away at the actual building material itself and cause a lot of structural damage and a lot of uh, structural repair that would be needed. Here again we have more fruiting bodies. And uh, this is the type of uh, fungi or mold that's growing on the wood here. And all that has to be remediated now. This is all due to not having uh, the humidity under control and also controlling all that bulk water that's been entering. Again, more fruiting bodies, as you can see, all the way through here. So all that will have to be wire brushed uh, and sanded to get that off and then cleaned with a mild detergent and then also uh, treated with a um, stain remover for aesthetics. Here is all the water that's standing in part of this crawl space and it's like this level all the way throughout. So you can see you got insulation that's just under the water and um, you got like there was like a slime film over all of this and you imagine all that going up into your house due to the stack effect in your HVAC and uh, holes that you know go for plumbing and electrical cords and cables and all that stuff allow this to go right up into your house and then the occupants actually breathe it. Here again you can see that film that is all over the uh, top of the water, all the insulation that's underneath the water. So that should give you a real good indication of just how much water is in here and how deep it is. I mean we had rubber boots on um, that were up to our knees walking around in here to try to stay dry when we're scoping this out. All right, just more pictures and you just really see, I mean, it's everywhere. It's all even all the way throughout. You can see it over here in the columns and stuff. This is how bad the mold has gotten on the wood. Like I said, you can start seeing three-dimensional growth. You can see fruiting bodies in areas. You got multiple types of uh, mold growth here. You got it uh, leading right 
into uh, wood decaying fungi that's uh, actually starting to eat at the floor joists is in the subfloor and some of that had to be replaced as well. Again, got a good view of the, uh, the light coming in here because there's actually no vent over there. That was just a open uh, vent with no screen or anything in there. We had to fix that as well. But you can see all the, uh, all the standing water throughout here and just how bad it is. All the mold growth up through here. Another issue, this was the second opening here. There's, this is uh, level with the ground. And so uh, when, this, when the water would accumulate here, it would just go right into the uh, door as well and fill up there. So we ended up having to put one of our custom access wells in there and we uh, put in a custom door as well. And we'll show you that as we go through this. If I can get the pictures to go through. All right, this was a different access uh, door through the garage that we ended up having to put a custom uh, door there and fix that. But here's that outside area. So we put um, our custom access well in there. We're going to put a drain in here um, and then turn around and get that to go into our drain tile and then into the sub pump and back out. So that part just hasn't been installed. We had to put some rock down here so we could just get in and out without tracking more of the mud in there so we'll show you what that looks like when that was all finished but uh, here is the crawl space after we finished everything here's that blue tank that was sitting in water and uh, it's up out of the water now and dry and um, all along the foundation perimeter walls we have our drain tile system put in there so as the water comes up underneath the footer like we explained in some of the other videos as the water comes up underneath the footer, it gets trapped into the drain tile system, and that drain tile system takes it to the sub pump. There's two sub pumps in this one, one on this end, one on the opposing end of the house, and uh, both of those exit out to the outside, go underground, and then go to a pop-up emitter that is uh, far away from the foundation. So you don't end up having a, it just recycle back over and over again. But this is one of the sub pumps that we installed. And like I said, there's drain tile all the way around, bringing that water to the sub pump. Can't just put in a sub pump and then hope that the water is going to make it there. That's not how it works. Uh, some contractors try to do that and say they're just going to put in the lowest point. The water never makes it there. You have to have an actual drain tile system or dewatering system that's going to direct that water over to the sub pump. This is just another area here. And you can see how nice everything is. We have um, we have our insulated uh, vapor barrier. This is a 90 mil that we use, and um, it's sealed to the wall. There, it is sealed all the way around the top as well, so um, moisture can't come out of the block and get up into the crawl space air. And also, uh, it's sealed to the floor liner and around all the uh, pillars or columns. And um, that blocks all the water from the ground as well, getting up into the crawl space and keeping this place super dry. So here is our April Air 1850 installed. So this goes to a condensate pump because this is gravity fed. This is an awesome machine. April Air is really um, makes great dehumidifiers. So it pulls all the air in this way. It turns around and condenses it in the coils that are inside. And then it uh, drains it into the sub pump, and then this sub pump, or I'm sorry, this condensate pump uh, takes this water out, and then we exit it to daylight or bring it to one of our sub pumps to be exited to daylight. So this is what that totally flooded out crawl space now looks like. You can see it's absolutely beautiful looking and highly functional. I mean, this this homeowner will never have an issue again. Here again to look from the other side in that other sub pump is way back in this corner. I'm not sure if we'll be able to see that or not, but we always exhaust our uh, dehumidifiers to the opposite side of the uh, crawl space if it's big enough and uh, balance out that drying system even better. So another just shot here. Um, the HVAC contractor came and ended up replacing all these lines. We got everything cleaned up so they could work in a nice area and then went behind them when they were finished and uh, uh, did a final cleaning as well to make sure that the end of the job for the homeowner looked this beautiful as well. So 
all this uh, fiberglass insulation ended up getting pulled off and the HVAC contractor replaced that as well. So here you can see one of our sub pump basins here as well. We always put clear lids on there so when we do our annual maintenance inspection we can easily look into there and uh, uh, see if there's any issues um, and then we can just pop these off and perform any type of um, uh, cleaning that we need to if there's iron or bacteria in there or anything else or just want to test the pump. But you can see how, how water just damaged all of these um, uh, flex lines or these supply lines that are pumping all the air from um, the HVAC system up into your house. So all that had to be replaced because of the water damage. So you can imagine if you, if you get on the preventative side, you won't have all this extra cost of having to fix your HVAC system. And um, But a lot of people just wait forever and uh, they wait till they have a really bad situation like this and then they do something about it which only drives up the cost exponentially so you really want to be on the preventative side and protect your home beforehand you can also look at the um the, at the mold that was on these floor joists look how nice of a job our guys did i mean they look brand new better than they ever were before these have not been replaced these are actual the floor joists that were covered in those fruiting bodies and um, all that mold and have been completely restored so you imagine this homeowner ever went to sell their house uh, the crawl space won't be an issue anymore matter of fact it'll be a, a, a selling point to make this house sell faster and again you can look at all the wood how it's been completely restored you can't see it but back here there's a three inch inspection gap for termites back there in case anybody's watching that but um, this is the final product and what um, the high quality that H2O Pro produces. We have a lifetime guarantee with all of our work. So if you want to get on the front end of fixing your crawl space or you want to get in, you want to get your crawl space um, fixed and uh, do that, um, even if you have a problem potentially already, uh, you're lessening that problem. Give us a call at Hydro Heroes at 302-321-7077. Uh, find us on the web at waterandmoldpros.com. Uh, that will be changing here soon to hydrohero.com, but the site's currently under construction. Uh, but um, we should be seeing that out in about 30 days. And it is going to be packed with unbelievable videos and um, reference libraries and all kinds of uh, information to get people to really understand uh, moisture coming into their home and what they can do to prevent that. So we would love to earn your business. Uh, we offer free co uh, crawl space consultations. Uh, please give us a call again at 302-321-7077. If you're watching this on Facebook, please hit the like button. Please like our page. Please uh, drop us a comment with questions down below. We love getting comments. Share this with your friends and help them get educated on um, the crawl space acts. Um, the crawl space portion of uh, waterproofing and protecting your home. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. And thank you guys so much and have a wonderful day.